Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's Ebony Lala here. If you're new, hi, welcome. Today I'm gonna be doing my labor and delivery story. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share with all your friends. He's just a gift from God, so I'm just so happy and so grateful that he's healthy. All right, get your snacks, baby, because you're about to hear this tape. I got my tacos. <laughs> just start off from the beginning but a lot of people that I've talked to have said that you know they've been induced I experienced my water breaking okay so it's not like the movies well mine wasn't like the movies it's not just a one puddle like it it just keeps flowing I was wearing a pad like during everything because it was just like all my fluids were just leaking out leaking out leaking out um, so let me just take you guys back to, um, I was just watching a movie and it's funny because the day, the day that my water broke was the day I went to my OB and she was like, oh, like, do you want to do a stretch and sweep? Which would like induce me more. And that was on the fifth to, I didn't feel like I need to be induced. Like I felt so much pressure <clears throat> in that area. I was just like, no, don't induce me. Like, I think I'll be fine. If anything, he'll come, you know, on the, like his actual due date, which was November 10th. Bring, I'm like in my bed, relaxed, pajamas, chill. Uh, and I'm watching a Christmas movie and I'm just so like in the Christmas spirit. I was like, yes, this is so cute. Love story, Christmas. Ugh, love it. Obviously, Netflix original. And uh, I was watching that and then I was like, oh, I was getting cheese because I'm like, I have to pee, like, now I have to get up. So I get up, I go pee, and then I come back to watch the rest of my movie. And then I'm like, am I still peeing? Guys, I think my water broke. Look at this. Oh my gosh, it's all over the freaking floor. Legit all over. All over my clothes. And I'm just still leaking. Um, My whole like the leggings and everything they were soaking wet because i was like literally wiping the floor with all the liquid that was on the floor i was wiping the floor with it you know what i'm a call because yeah something is happening i'm sorry but something is um i called him and he's like are you joking the man asked me if i'm joking no why would i be joking what kind of joke honestly if it was early in the pregnancy i would have definitely played a prank on him but this close, like this, this close to my due date, you think I'm making a joke? I showered. I literally leaked all over my room. All in my leggings. I'm wearing a pad right now. Um, my parents drove us to the hospital. I was like, I was just going to the hospital and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm feeling this now. Like I'm like, oh. So like every five or like five to eight minutes I was feeling like oh my gosh like I felt the pain uh the only the thing I would say about the pain it's a lot it is a lot I feel like it's a lot more pain than you think it is because it comes in and out it's not like just consistent so I feel like that makes labor a lot worse than it could be if there's just if you just always had the pain like you can you can't take a breather like you take a breather and then it comes back like sharper harder like oh so now we get to the hospital i take all like we take out all our bags and everything and jabari comes out of the car with me thankfully we got my parents to drive us because um he didn't end up coming inside for like about an hour hour and a half just because of covid we made it here <laughs> you hear that breathing? breathing. Yes, I'm You're breathing. doing good. <laughs> um, We're just chilling in the hallway right now, just waiting for the nurse. The nurse is going to come bring us to the room, I guess. I guess so. You okay? Yep. Are you feeling it right now? Yep. Okay, that was about six minutes. 
Okay, let's go. Hello. Hello. Good, good. How are you? Okay. I just need to ask you guys a couple questions. Mm -hmm. I'm asking it to both of you. Okay. Yep. Okay, guys, I'm here. I'm waiting. And they're just gonna tell me when, when, if I can stay or not or something. Oh, I don't freaking know. I'm just like, oh goodness, man. Oh. Basically, the nurse came, and honestly, the first nurse that I got, like the nurse that checked me in and everything, she she wasn't too empathetic. I felt like she wasn't too empathetic. So when she was checking me in, she asked me to take off all my all my clothes whatever the case may be and she checked my a pad because i don't tell you guys i what i did have a pad on because of my water breaking and she looks at my pad and she's like oh my gosh she pooped inside of you and i like why would you i was thinking why would she tell me that well i was thinking why would she tell me that because i was already feeling very anxious and i was trying to stay calm but not having anybody there um, this being my first time, I was just kind of all over the place, like, what do I do? And there's literally, there was like literally nobody in the hospital, so there wasn't like no other pregnant lady I could talk to or anything. I was just, I'm sorry, but the nurse said, oh my gosh, she pooped inside you. Why would you say, oh my gosh? I was like... She's like, don't worry, which didn't make me feel any better. That also made me frightened because I thought I had to go. I thought I was going to have to go a whole different direction. Uh, so um, because of my gestational diabetes, they had to put these two little monitor things on my belly. So one was to hear the baby's heartbeat and one was to feel like, I guess, my contractions and how far apart they were. Um, before they wanted to check me into the room, they actually... Um, had me do some tests for like 30 minutes. I'm not sure what it was, but they were saying that they need to know that my water broke. I'm like, I'm, I'm positive my water broke. And the way that I'm feeling these like, pain at this point, like I know my water broke. And she's like, oh, we just have to make sure you're, um, three centimeters dilated to, for you to check into a room. I'm like, nobody's here. Check me in, baby. Check me in already. Like, no one's here. So anyway, um, I'm there complaining about not being able to have my support there. She basically said, like, if you sit down, shut up, and do what I say, um, everything will go faster. In a nutshell, that's what she said, but obviously politically correct, because, you know, she's, she's trying to be nice, but she's also kind of, like, stush at the same time. Anyway, the doctor came and she's like, oh yeah, you're ready for your room. That, at this point, it's probably like 12.30 and then Jabari finally got to come, finally get to come, come to the room, bring my stuff. I didn't want an epidural. I didn't. I was, I tell you, I was in pain. Like, I know this may be TMI, but right before, like, I was in so much pain I had to go and make a little stool and that relieved some of my pain but then I was like oh, I still feel like Ugh. like I was just like oh my gosh this is like, I don't even know what it felt like I don't even know how to explain. people say period cramps but that don't feel like no period cramps to me I was trying to breathe but like it's hard to breathe when you're feeling so much pain, you know? And I was, I was, I was telling them, I'm like, no, I don't want epidural or whatever. And the nurses kept coming like, oh, okay, just let me know when you want the epidural. And I'm like, I'm not taking it. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm not taking it. I, I don't think I could, I could do this. And because I had all those attachments and IV as soon as I got there because of the gestational diabetes, so they have to be monitoring me. I was hooked up to all these things so I wasn't able to like walk around the hospital or like stretch or anything because I was hooked up to all these things and these things need to be like 
in place so that they can be monitoring everything at like every single moment. So my plan to walk around and not get the epidural mm, kind of backfired because uh, that was my plan. I was like, oh, I'm just going to walk around and um, just keep my mind off things. But I literally had to be in bed like and just feel all the pains, everything. The only I only got up once because I had to use the bathroom. At this point, uh, it's probably like 2 a.m. and I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I can't do this. I don't think I can do this. Um, and I was like, Jamari, get the epidural man. This guy's like, are you sure? I'm sure. Don't ask me no questions. Just go get him. Just go get him. I'm tired. And I I can barely like, and I'm trying to breathe, but it, like the pain hurts so much. He's like, ah. like, it's just, it was, it was a, there was a lot going on. Like I was just like, oh my god, this is too much. So I got the epidural. Um, by the time I got the epidural, I was like uh, five centimeters, five centimeters to like five and a half centimeters, and they were like, they were like, oh, you got the epidural just in time, and I was like, okay, great. Well, let's see. I'm like, hopefully this takes away all the pain. So now the nurse um, is holding me, and she's like. Just breathe, take a deep breath in, and just breathe out. And she's like, don't move. So she had me holding her like this. Like, she was in front of me, and she had me holding her like this. And I had my back turned over. And she's like, don't move, even if you feel a contraction. I'm like, I'm going to try my best. <laughs> like, Lord, please don't let me die. Please don't let me be paralyzed or anything like that. Like, please. So I took it. And they're like, do you feel pain? I'm like, hell yes. Is this going to start working soon? I was wondering why this is taking so long to work. I felt like it didn't work instantly enough for me. And they're like, do you feel this? I'm like, yes. They're like, oh, okay. Well, you just push this if you want more, push this uh, if you want less or whatever. I was still feeling that pressure in like it, I, I felt that pressure in my back and in my bum I still felt the pressure in my back and my bum so I still felt like when the contractions were coming they just weren't as um severe as before I'm thinking this is gonna wipe out my pain I'm not gonna feel a damn thing but I still felt something I though well, actually I still felt felt a like a lot like I was still feeling a lot of um contractions and everything I just felt a lot better like I could breathe I could kind of relax but I was so uncomfortable because I was laying there for so long and I asked the nurse if she can help me or like make me feel more comfortable um and this is a new nurse all my other nurses were great um they were super empathetic towards me and like def definitely understood uh my needs so she was like oh like let me she got this um what did she get? She got an uh, exercise ball and it was kind of shaped long ways and she put my foot up and the other foot spread out and like that felt a lot better and at this point it's probably around f 5, 5.30 and I'm feeling like so much better and I'm like oh great now I could take a nap. Okay not 5.30 probably like 5 or like it's probably like 4 30 or 4 o'clock one of the two I wasn't really keeping up with the time I didn't even have my phone I didn't know where anything was it was hard to be on like you know it was hard to and I wanted to record my labor and like legit in the room so it was really hard to do that or do any of that when I was like my mind was just out the door so she checked me before she put my legs up and she's like oh you're around eight centimeters so give it a couple hours and you'll be ready to push and I was like great so I was like oh I can take an hour nap because like when she elevated my leg and everything I was starting to feel a lot better uh I, they said I need energy to push because they said as a new mother I'm probably gonna take two hours two and a half hours um to push the baby on I'm like two and a half hours is it gonna feel that long she's like it doesn't feel that long but it it is that long so I was about to close my eyes <clears throat> and then the nurse said oh let me just check you one more time she checks me my girl starts putting up the levers of the, the hospital bed and she's like it's time to push I'm like what <clears throat> 
I haven't even, I haven't, I haven't slept since, I haven't slept, I didn't sleep, I didn't sleep because I was, I was up all day, the, uh, then I went on a walk, I was watching a movie, I, I haven't slept, and I'm just like, I have to push now, okay, um, I'm like, God, this is all up to you now, it's all up to you, she starts putting out the levers, and I get ready to push, so when you're getting ready to push, it's definitely, uh 360 so they want you to hold your breath instead and you're thinking like the whole process i had to like breathe in deep breath in deep breath out blah 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 and now it's time to push and they tell me when you breathe in hold your breath and i'm just there like Man, I didn't practice this. All I practiced was the breathing. I was just like, oh. So I was pushing, pushing. And then the doctors are like, oh, I see the hair. It's crazy because Jabari literally got, woke up. Like, he was sleeping. So he literally got up probably like 5.30 or 5.45. And one of those. Um, And this is when my legs were up. And he's like, it's time. I'm like... It's time. He's coming. The doctor came. She looked. She's like, oh my gosh, I see his head. I see his hair. He's coming. I took like a little nap before she started pushing. He so did. I woke up like right on time. Right on time. And then um, I woke up and like my hands were shaking for some reason. I don't know if it was because I was nervous or because uh, it was cold as hell in that room. I was trying to stay warm. So when I woke up, my hands were just like all over the place. And then... um. Yeah, I got right beside her bed, and like they had that the things up to keep her legs up, and the doctor said, "No, come hold her legs." So I'm just like, "All right." So now I have a view of the top or the bottom, and like a whole bunch of stuff is going through my mind right now. It's like all the dudes that that I've talked to about having um, or being there during the delivery, they're just like, "Whatever you do, stay on top." So I'm just like, "Yo, this is my son." So. I didn't really take into consideration what they were saying, so I looked down and I was like, "Oh, I see the hairs on my on my little man's head." Push. <laughs> so yeah, I was down there. I was coaching her and everything. Like everything was just so surreal. Um, I don't think it was like a disgusting thing to watch. You know, it was it was it was so natural and it was so beautiful that. Um, you know, like I was embracing like every moment of it, you know, because that's my that's this is my little homie. Like, come on. I want to see him come into the world. And, you know, it was it was it was a, it was a VIP me. view that not even she could see. You yeah, know? I couldn't even. I didn't. You know what I mean? So like it was, it was definitely a blessing. Everything went well. Um, And then he came out. He came out at six, I think, six seventeen. Yeah, he came out at six seventeen. And like he got put on my chest like really quickly because he um, he did poo inside because he was stressed or something. So they had to clean out his lungs and everything and just bring him to the table as fast as possible. So I only had like a second of chest time. And then they um, just were, the pediatricians were there to um, help him. Um, and then they said like his vitals and everything were good. I was, I was thinking to myself, wow. I just pushed out a whole human. <laughs> you think, when you're pregnant, you're like, okay, yeah, obviously that's what you're doing. But when you take a step back and you think about it, you're just like, it was, I was like shocked and I was so bus. I was so tired. I did rip a little bit, so I got the stitches. Oy. And my epidural, when she was stitching me up, was wearing off. And I'm just like, ooh. I said, I was like, I can feel this. She's just like, she's like, it's okay, we're almost done. I was just like, damn, yo, this is freaking hurts. It hurts. And then, obviously, you have to pee and blah, blah, blah. Oh, she's, it was just a lot. I would say, out of the whole labor and delivery part, that was fine. 
I would say the aftermath of the like the aftermath of the pain of like coming home having to um you know take care of your baby and everything while you are you're, you're you yourself are still healing is probably the hardest part um so they do give you resources uh to help you if you don't have help at home and I'm just so thankful and grateful for all the people that I have to help um the support uh, my boyfriend because I I could not imagine doing this by yourself it, it, some you're in so much pain like I was in so much pain when after um, the delivery and everything like I went to emergency and and to, just to check because I was like this pain I don't know if this is regular I made sure I went back to my OB. She said, everything's healing great. Everything's doing well. Um, and so did the emergency doctor. I was just like, I don't know. I was like, wow, this is, this is painful. I feel like, you know, everything's healing better now. And it, it's just a lot when, you know, you're trying to take care of a baby, pick them up, do all these things, sit with them. Like sitting down was a chore. Sitting down, I was like, you know, it just made me cringe. Walking made me cringe. Little, the little things that we take for granted made me cringe just because I felt so sore. When I took the epidural, I didn't feel like, you know, shamed or anything. I just felt like I wanted to have no epidural. But fam, you don't get no award for not taking epidural. It's just... I just didn't want to take it because I didn't want any of the risks afterwards. Circumstances changed and I just felt like I needed to have it. And that's what my OB said. My OB said, uh, yeah, you can have your birth plan, but also remember like your body is going to tell you or like signal you into what you want to do and just make sure you do what's best for you and what you feel is best because she said just like you want a vaginal birth you know you never know it could happen to be a c-section or something like that uh which I had to understand as well I'm thankful because I when you know when you hear a baby pooping inside you you think emergency c-section I've heard many people have uh stories where their baby pooped inside of them and they have to make sure they have an emergency c-section it's not like they can do a vaginal birth anymore but thankfully he pooped inside well not thankfully he pooped inside but thankfully i was still able to do a vaginal birth uh because i heard i've heard that the c-section pain is way worse than you getting stitched up and i'm i gotta say i'm a i'm a freaking crybaby so it's just not for me and god knows it's not for me <laughs> because I sometimes I would sit down and I'd cry sometimes I'd be walking I'd be crying I go to the bathroom I'm crying because it, it was just so painful but other than that I'm so happy for my baby boy to be here he's healthy um everybody that was asking about my labor and delivery story I hope you guys enjoyed it uh let me tell you guys how I'm feeling I know everybody was wishing me well with my gestational diabetes and the iron deficiency literally they took test um they took my blood test and all that stuff right after birth and they're like you're good like you don't have to do any more pricking you're fine literally just went away just like that so as for me i'm good as for my baby keems he's good um and i just can't wait for him to grow up to a big strong black man he's just he's just such a sweetheart already so thanks for watching i'm very blessed and i feel very blessed and highly favored um god god is good all the time and i'm just thankful that we are both okay